Hey guys, welcome to another English commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be on Zodiac. It's the MSL Season 4 Round of 16 diggity, match diggity between... Diggity. Yeah, Diggity, Diggity, and Diggity with Jane Bean Ryan. As I was about to say, I've got Moltrap and <laughs> and Clazard, as you can hear right there. Uh, Orion starting at the 3 o'clock position in red. And we have Jankby starting at the 9 o'clock position in Teals. So going to be an exciting matchup. Uh, keep in mind that Orion is down one, uh, Jankby up one. Orion not playing well last time. Yeah, Jankby uh, looked pretty good. He looked pretty solid last game. And he actually, you know, he's kind of like, he's one of those Protoss players. I've never really given him too much credence. I mean, he's the second Protoss behind Stork on Samsung. I've never personally given him too much respect. Um, but he's, I mean, he 2 0 his group before this stage. And now he, he looked pretty solid against Quanro in the first game, so i got to give him a little bit of respect. By the way, another little kind of tidbit about him. I remember reading that um, they had that giant tournament of like 128 players or whatever, um, the eSports tournament or some crap, I don't remember what the name of it was. And uh, that was the one that, that Jadong won, like basically kind of right before he started rising to fame. And in that matchup, Jadong won... Two to one in a best of three against Jangbi to win that tournament. So Jangbi um, beat everyone but Jadong in that tournament. Um, so um, you know, kind of just an interesting thing to think about, I guess. Yeah, and Jangbi just started off his pylon, uh, just put his force pylon down outside of his room. So I, I'm guessing from that that he's probably looking to fast expand uh, and put a forge down next. Um, but he, he's, he's scouting very early as well. He put that pylon on quite early, and and he's actually scouted the six o'clock position for us, and it's empty. So um, he's and he is in fact putting that forge down. And this is this is something that's been pointed out a couple of times previously. But but basically, had he gotten that scout in at the six o'clock position, he would have not had to, you know if if he'd seen the zerg player, he would have known what the zerg player was doing, and therefore would not have had to commit the forge force. Could have gone for next. First, and that can really change the game. And it just shows you how much of a part luck plays in the game and why big maps are fairer. Because uh, on a smaller map, it's more likely a Protoss player will be able to get that earlier scout in and therefore gain a significant badge by going uh, Nexus rather than Forge if, if the Zerg player is not put a spawning pool down. Uh, meanwhile, um, Orion has chosen to take his hatchery at his natural expo first uh, and then put the spawning pool down afterwards um, Orion obviously has not scouted uh, Jang B yet he needs to send a drone out to scout and I think Zerg players need to do this more often they need to they need to scout with drones more often because they do sometimes get caught out and we're probably going to see the, the Nexus now going down for um, for Jang B I have to say um, Orion looks a little bit sleepy almost um, uh, I'm, maybe he's just a little bit worried or maybe he's just tense but he, looked, he, he had this kind of almost you know I'm constipated, but I don't want to show it expression on his face. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen that expression. <laughs> but uh, he, he, sorry, he looked he looked like he had that. And I have to say, I wasn't impressed by him in the first game. So uh, hopefully he can produce something better. This is Zodiac. It is a more balanced matchup. Uh, and, and hopefully he can produce the goods here. Yeah, I'm really hoping we're going to see something creative out of Orion. <clears throat> We've seen some definitely, some really interesting builds on Zodiac. I don't think we're going to see anything past the, the I, I'm expecting a three hatch Muta build here. Uh, but we've seen some Zerg players go early drop versus Terran. I don't think we're going to end up seeing that here, because you're going to see Corsairs early and going early drop. There's no point in going drop against uh, Corsair. You're just going to get your Overlords eaten alive. Single cannon down, uh, and it looked like a gateway starting. No uh, no additional cannon. And we're not seeing a lot of lings out from, from Orion at this point. Only two, and I really feel like that might be a mistake because I, I feel like Protoss players have been behind and have ended up losing more games when they've had their scout denied. And uh, Ryan not being aggressive with that, we definitely saw that with July Zerg. I think we saw that uh, with Yark as well. We, uh, and not to, the, sort of to the same degree with Luxury, where Luxury did the 5 pool, that was more of a scouting issue. He now has four Zerglings chasing down some units and now uh, setting up his third expansion at 12 o'clock. <clears throat> Obviously going to go for that third gas uh, and get Mulesks uh, down the way. In the meantime, the Cybern X Corps headed up for Jangby, so Jangby well on his way. He only has a single cannon at his front door. He needs to be a little careful, because uh, I think if Orion scouts this out, realizes there's only a single cannon, he might just decide uh, to punch that front door. Putting down the lair at the, the natural instead of his main, trying to deny a little bit of information to that scout, but it looks, that, looks like that scout's going to come down the ramp and see it anyway. Wings are so cute yeah. when there's only a couple of them, though. Um, anyways, I don't know if... I, I'm, I'm curious um, why you might think that he's going to go for Mulesks. Uh, exactly. It'd be interesting to see what he does. Um, but yeah, basically pretty standard so far. I'm, I, <laughs> I actually <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, class. Um, yeah, Lair up now for uh, for uh, Orion, but his, his expansions have been scouted. That third expansion has been scouted, so this might be a risk that might not pay off for him. However, that being said, when, when the... Uh, 
Protoss player fast expands. The Zerg player can usually get that expansion, and, and the key is going to be defending. Uh, and, and, and really, the moment I think the Protoss player sees that, he's got to go Dark Temporar, and he is indeed putting the Citadel Ladder down. Because with that third expand, with that third hatchery being uh, in a different expansion, it means that it's, it's more spread out. And fourth hatchery now going down for um, Jangi, so he's really going all out macro here. And, and as Diggity so wisely predicted, he's put the Spire down. And I think the reason Diggity predicted that was because of the gas, because the Spire build uh, going for that initially, especially, is more gas heavy um, than, than, say, if but but to be honest, you know, two gases is perfectly um, su sufficient to go for a, for a spiral. And interesting enough, he stopped he stopped mining gas uh, even though he put the citadel out. So he looks like he's going for actually speed upgrade, fast speed upgrade to Zenos because he's actually not mining his second gas, which is what he would have doing if he would have gone for for Templar. I, I feel he I feel that uh, Jangu realizes that Orion is macroing heavily and trying to get an economic advantage. So he's going to try and get those uh, a, a large group of Zenos out and push through and punch through before his opponent do that. And he might be playing right into his opponent's hand because he's only got the one star gate, he's only got the one Corsair, uh, and he's going to be playing right into Jangu. Right into Orion's hands with the mass middleist, and Orion's going to have a huge advantage with Jangbi having chosen without knowing uh, what Orion was doing, without having seen that spire, without having. I think he almost assumed a hydra build uh, and, and decided to go for those speed upgraded zealots. And, and I think it's, it's, he's put himself at a disadvantage. It's going to cost him a little bit here uh, because he's chosen to do that. Because I think now uh, Orion is in a very strong position in this game. Yeah, it looks like Orion in the meantime got that Hydralist in the background, uh, going for that kind of that five hatch. We saw this out of Yellow versus, uh, I think it was Bisu, just going to put that Spire down so we can get some Scourges to try to take out those Corsairs early. We see level one uh, damage already being upgraded for Orion. It looks like he's getting level one uh, damage for his air units as well, so taking control of the air. As you can see, that Forge spinning, so he's going to be ahead as far as those upgrades, and that could be very dangerous. Uh, so I feel like if Orion's going to take this game, he needs to hurry up uh, and push in now before that level one weapons, uh, before that level one weapons comes around. Otherwise, he's going to be in a spot of trouble here. Looks like he's producing, I'm going to assume those are Hydralisks right now, uh, to try to punch in the front door. And, and we could see, actually, Jang being in a decent amount of trouble. Uh, as you can see, the Corsairs haven't really got, they've managed to take one down one Overlord, but otherwise, it's more or less been contained. Uh, and I think this is going to be a time push from Orion, as you can see. Yeah, bringing the Hydralisks down now. <clears throat> Getting backside, doing a little bit of harassment with these mules, but I think it's just to try to keep those uh, those Corsairs back in the meantime. He's only got, I think, four Zealots at the front door uh, and those two cannons. He hasn't gotten a third cannon down, so he's going to have a hard time defending against this. And now bringing up the uh, being uh, Jang B being a little careful, uh, a little uncareful there, I should say, uh, a little careless. There we go. Uh, five Zealots trying to push up and attack these units out in the field. I think uh, that Orion's going to be able to handle these. So uh, Jang B knows what's coming. I think he needs to get another cannon down if he's going to defend. Uh, if he's going to be able to defend against this, he's another Zealot up front. Uh, Looks like level one weapons is upgraded, so that's definitely boon. And he's also got speed upgraded zealots, so things not. I would actually say that things are not looking uh, very good for Orion at this point. Yeah, and this time I'm gonna try not to completely lose my mind when I start to talk and just start laughing to myself. But uh, I think, yeah, things basically. Uh, if if Orion had come in a little bit sooner, I think he probably would have been able to take take out um, Jangbi. But now that that the speed and the plus one weapons are up, uh, and he's gotten a few Corsairs out, I think that's the difference. And I think uh, Jangbi is pretty safe now because he does have three Corsairs. If he gets a fourth and a fifth out, that'll be good. Oh, but it looks like um, Orion coming in for a huge battle here. He's kind of. Um, Moving his scourges and gets a couple scourges taken out, and that was a little bit careless of him. He's not microwing. Okay, just as I said, he wasn't microwing his hydralis. He started micro his hydralis. So um, looks like uh, Orion's attack is going to be able to press in here. I'm not sure if he quite has enough for it. He's, he's going to have to fall back uh, away from those cannons to, to take out the zealots. But he is taking out the zealots now. And uh, oh, but scourge. I'm um, sorry. Corsair's coming in and taking out the overlords. Basically, if Orion doesn't do a lot of damage on this attack, then then he's going to be way behind afterwards. But it looks like he's going to do significant damage. Five gateways, though, so I think it might come down to... Never mind, I was going to say it might come down to him holding his main. But uh, Orion is actually in his main now, so things looking incredibly, incredibly bad for, for Jangvi at this point. I'm, I'm really... I'm, you know, even if he holds off his attack, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to come back from this in the long-term sense. Yeah, those zealots are speed upgraded. Uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, Jangvi is trying to actually hunt those overlords down with those corsairs and try and keep the hydras count low. Uh, he has got his Templar archives up, so he should have Dark Templar popping out any soon. And, and with no overlord support for those hydras, that's really his last hope. But I feel he's already lost too many probes uh, in in trying to actually defend that attack against uh, Orion to actually be able to successfully play in this game now. And if that pylon gets taken down, that's going to disable about two of his gateways. He's now once again being forced to fight with his probes, and those probes are just running right into those hydras. And I just love it when probes run into uh, large groups of large groups of Zerg. Units to just basically die. 
uh, suicide probes, jihadi probes, unfortunately not being able to affect any damage. Um, and and I, I really feel that Jangmi just played right into uh, Orion's hands there with his choice of build. You know, he only produced a couple of mutilists, but they were more than enough to harass his, his line and, 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 and be effective against those zealots. And Jangmi just completely getting overpowered by Orion, and I'm not just not sure where it all went wrong for Jangmi because it wasn't like he was outplayed in the air. It wasn't like Orion had a large group of mutilists, uh, and yet at the same time, he just got completely, completely overpowered. He, 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 I think the problem was that he chose to go for that three-gate zealot build, uh, and he didn't have any tech, and what he really needed there was Templar or, 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 or a Reaver versus that, that Hydra push, and he just didn't have it. Yeah, really, he, it would have helped a lot if he had a Dark Templar, if he had Size Storm out, obviously, uh, would have had to go with a few less gateways, uh, a little more gas, probably a couple less Corsairs. Um, anyway, <clears throat> I, I really feel like one of the major mistakes right there is the fact he took his Zealots off the front line, the Zealots he really needed for defense, and pushed out as though Orion had no forces on the ground at that point. And uh, I think he was expecting a lot to see a lot of mutilisks in the air. I guess maybe he didn't see the Hydralis then. I think he was expecting just being able, uh, just to run straight into Orion's base and run him straight over. Instead, he ends up all of it, losing all of his zealots except for like four or five out in the field. And if he had those backed up on his cannon line, I think we would have seen a different story here. Uh, instead, though, running them out ended up killing them basically uh, in a non-defensive stance. And uh, also only had two cannons up front. He really needed to get the third or fourth cannon down, at w which really he didn't because he was pumping uh, more gateways out so yeah I, I feel like a couple mistakes there first of all needed at least two more cannons uh, and additionally I think he could have held off with that force but in, uh, decided to engage on the hydralist terms instead of uh, on his cannon line so uh, maybe we'll see a different story here in game three but uh, <clears throat> yeah Orion winning out right there and I, I feel like his timing was a little bit off but yeah still ended up winning through kind of a crazy match both players trying to do random different timing attacks and different strategies switching around and uh, yeah, all kinds of things almost going on in that game. <laughs> all kinds of things almost going on. <laughs> that's brilliant. I have to say that's brilliant, well, Um Yeah, uh, I, I think Diggity hit the nail on the head though. I think Jaime might have been okay had he not suicided his zealots. Uh, and I know the very definition of zealot is someone willing to commit suicide, but I think he was still a little cavalier there. But uh, nevertheless, great game. I don't have any further thoughts on this, so I'm going to leave Diggity and Molchop to finish it up. Yeah, I, I'm also out of thoughts, so I'm going to say here. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I guess Molchop is...